This is a kind of a Gacy inspired clown here. Mm -hmm. um, he's kind of got that uh, that look and feel to him. Yeah. Jeff, I know I've seen your work at HauntCon. I know you've done the uh, the body competition thing, mm -hmm. and you won the last two years. I did. So, um, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your uh, the history of uh, how you kind of got rolling in special effects. What kind of sparked it for you? Wow, um, we can go back uh, quite a few years uh, when I was in high school. Uh, so, I, as you know, I grew up in, uh, in Wichita, Kansas, uh, actually just outside in a little small town called Hayesville. Um, no really, uh, uh, no access to the outside world. I had no idea about makeup or anything like that, but I was an artist. Um, I like to draw skulls and things like that, just creepy, creepy stuff. Uh, I actually found a Fangoria magazine in the alleyway. And it was Army of Darkness on, on the cover, and it had this big spread uh, pull-out poster in the middle of the um, of the, uh, the the creature uh, uh, from the 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 big pit. And I saw that, and I said, "That's what I want to do, man. That's my ticket out of here. Uh, that's where I, that's where I want I want to I want to go create this stuff. I, I just wanted everything I want I could find out about." Doing makeup, that's what I wanted. I just wanted to eat, sleep, and drink makeup. Uh, and, uh, and, I, and I got started, man. I just I got into Halloween. I've always been into Halloween. But then that was a turning point where uh, Halloween's after that, I was looking for stuff to do crazy makeups and things like that. Um, and then I, I found my way uh, out to LA. I uh, came out here, went to school. Uh, I, I took a journeyman's course at uh, Makeup Designery in 2000. Um, it was a three-month course. I learned beauty and I learned character. Uh, all my effect stuff, I pretty much learned as I went along through my career, which is about 20 years now. Um, I did a lot of short films. A lot of uh, uh, low-budget horror, which I love doing that stuff, as I had a lot of say uh, instead of uh, director, all the politics, and, and no, you know, this is what I created. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And uh, so I love doing low-budget stuff. Um, and then uh, Halloween found me. I started uh, doing makeup at uh, Cinema Secrets, uh, which is the uh, company that uh, owns Wuchi. Um uh, that was, uh, I think my first Halloween there was 2001, and I uh, started doing makeup there every year after that and some other small jobs and worked my way up to creative director there and uh, sculptor, mold maker, just about everything that I could do. Um, and uh, as of now, I started West Effects Inc., let's see, about a year and a half ago now, and I've been open since January last year. So I've been open for a year, I'm teaching classes. I have a makeup artist agency where I'm sending artists out to do jobs around LA. Um, I'm also studying cosmetic chemistry and creating my own product line, paints, glues, uh, different types of sealers, which hopefully if all works out well, I'll have everything at Transworld this year. Um, but we're, we're closing in pretty quick. Um, that I'm doing a lot of sculpting. That's that's my big deal. Is foam prosthetics. That's that's what I love to do, um, and that's that's what uh, that's what I'm uh, uh, eat, sleeping, and drinking right now for sure. So foam prosthetics. That's something you got into with your time at uh, Cinema Secrets. It is. So uh, when I when I first started, I was applying them for Halloween. Um, I was applying them on uh, all different types of customers that would come in. Uh, they do a lot of bookings over there. Uh, we'd, we'd probably book 100, 150 uh, makeups for Halloween. Uh, wow. And uh, I would say, oh, man, I think maybe maybe five years ago, um, it was all foam prosthetics. You didn't have a lot of face painting or other, other makeups, uh, superhero characters and stuff like that. It was all generic uh, foam prosthetics, and and I just I got really good, got really fast, 
Um, and, you know, through the years sculpting my own, I actually started, uh, I won't say who, but somebody told me I couldn't do it. <laughs> and I said, oh, you know, uh, uh, don't tell me that. <laughs> so, and I started sculpting my own. <laughs> and then, and now I have somewhere over 30 sculpts in the Wuchi line um, since that time. Uh, and a lot of other, a lot of other things. I did packaging and I do the sales and marketing with them. Um, which I'll be doing at HawkCon in NOLA this year and last year and the year before. I think my first show with, with my, my first trade show, um, uh, Halloween at Party Expo and Transworld were together. And that was back my first show. I think uh, I still have my, my uh, badge. I think it was 2004 was my first show. I don't know if you guys remember that back in Chicago. Years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> back in Chicago, cold. Yeah. It was a day or two ago. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. I had to bring up the Fangoria magazine because I was like, that was my favorite too. Because I was I was born in 73. So that was, uh -huh. you know, I couldn't wait till the grocery store got him out on the shelves. I knew it was like a Tuesday or something. And I was like there. And then, you know, of course I had to buy it, you know. Yeah. Paper, paper route money, whatever. But that was the first. I always go to the back and see the new mask they had in the back, and uh -huh. that brings back memories. Oh man, it's uh, and I, you know, I don't know. Do you subscribe now? No, I haven't picked up new? a Fangoria in a while. Yeah, you know, so they went out of print there for a while, and I, I'm not sure the whole deal, but I, I, I'm, I think somebody bought them and brought it back to life. And uh, as soon as I heard that, I jumped on it and uh, and received them every month since. Since then, nice. Yeah, it's good stuff. Love it. Tell me a little bit about your school. What do you teach, and how does that? How many weeks is it, and what do they come away with? And so, well, right now, um, uh, what I myself I'm teaching, I'm teaching sculpting, mold making, and foam prosthetics. Uh, we start with uh, with design and concept. We move into um, uh, sculpting, uh, then we do the mold making, and uh, and then eventually running foam prosthetics. Uh, the course that I'm doing right now is only six days long. It's a very intense course. Um, uh, we don't mess around at all. We jump right in and uh, we get work done. Uh, I'm working on other classes uh, for myself, but uh, uh, in the in the midst of everything else that's going on, uh, I just hired uh, another teacher. Uh, her her name is uh, Michelle Almanza, and she's going to be teaching beauty and some other courses out of here, just to kind of keep things going. Um, uh, it's being out here on the West Coast is uh, being in LA. I have a lot of competition out here uh, teaching, so all the schools are out here, and everybody wants to go into film. Um, and the Halloween uh, industry is uh, is overlooked by a lot of artists. Uh, so what what I've done from the beginning is try to uh, uh, bring it out of the darkness and explain to these artists that are going to these other schools that want to go to film. They want they want to work on film. They want to do monsters or beauty or whatever they want to do. But they but they think film film film. But there's so many artists out there and there's not enough jobs. And the schools are just pumping people out left and right. Um, and I see the Halloween and attractions industry as an overlooked uh, career path. Um, so I'm trying to bring that into the light. Uh, the shows that I've been doing out here, like Midsummer Scream, and and um, uh, we got a Haunt X that's coming up here in February. Um, so so back to my classes. I'll, I'll get kind of distracted. My brain does that as a you know one of those weird artists. Not guys, to, but, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, so I try to focus on that six day course right now, uh, which, which does turn into another four days, uh, with application and paint, uh, on top of that. So it's a 10 day all together, but some people find that they, they don't, they only want to, uh, do the sculpting and mold making. Uh, they want to learn that a lot of, a lot of people out here, a lot of my students come in with already having knowledge or taking classes somewhere else on application and paint. Um, so uh, they end up wanting to to learn how to sculpt their own stuff. Uh, I, I do get a lot of students that are that have never touched clay, never touched a latex, don't know what any of this stuff is, and they just want an activity to do. 
uh, and they'll come in. I should have grabbed some of, I got a couple pieces on the shelf over here of, of some current students that are, have never, never touched clay before. And their, their work is amazing. And that's, that's usually what, what happens is that they find some, you know, some people can draw and some people can't. And uh, what I find is a lot of the people that can't draw, they can sculpt. They can do things three dimensionally. They just see it differently. Um, it is, I haven't picked up a pencil and drawn anything in a long time. You know, as soon as I got clay in my hands, uh, it was all over with. I, I rather, I, I had a, a customer in this morning, uh, hopefully a potential customer. He's uh, in pre-production for a film. He's got two characters. Um, and I was explaining to him that, you know, over for concept and design of his characters, uh, I, I asked him if it was all right if, if I didn't draw anything out as far for concept and design, if I could just sketch it in clay for him, you know, and, and I, you know, nobody's going to say no to that. But uh, I can I find that I'm faster putting clay down uh, than I am picking up a pencil. And sometimes these days I, I will pick up a pencil and try to draw something. And I just I, I almost don't have it anymore. It's almost gone. <laughs> Kind of crazy how, how the mind works that way, but you don't practice it, yeah. Yeah, yeah don't practice. I, you know, mm -hmm. I don't. I, I'm, I'm in clay and I'm and I'm knee deep in epoxy and stone molds all day long. So uh, pencils just aren't aren't my thing anymore. So what's a good um, little kid like someone wants to start sculpting their own stuff? What kind of things do we need to get started? You think? Uh, well. So I will have at Transworld this year, if, you're, if any of the audience is going or the future audience of this video, um, I will have some of my generic sculpting bucks there for purchase. Um, the price is to do, be determined, but I do sell them to my students for 40 bucks. They're made of uh, BJB T1630 epoxy. They're very strong. They last 30 years. If you take care of them, you don't over overcook them or anything. Um, and uh, there are a couple of generic faces. I have a male and a female. Um, they're uh, they're perfect for sculpting on. They just they really are. the The face has been modified through the years, but it is a face that I, I uh, have uh, brought with me from Wuchi uh, that I had modified a couple times uh, before what I have to get what I have now. Um, but it's, it's tried and true for, for 30 plus years with them for the generic face. Uh, so you'll need a, you'll need something like that to sculpt on. Uh, you need some good lights. Uh, I like to use Chavant clay, uh, the medium, um, it, it tends to, to work the best for me. Um, and, uh, and, and then you just, uh, go through the tools, start buying all the sculpting tools and find out what works out for you. I have, um, I have a lot of sculpting tools, a lot of them, probably 80 different types of sculpting tools, but I tend to use about three or four of them uh, for everything. Uh, just uh, so it's, it's, I've gone through them all until I figured out these are the ones I want to use. Um, but that's really all you need to get started. Uh, and then just the knowledge, uh, some, some uh, training on, on how to go from there, making the mold, safety training, you, you really need to pay attention to what the materials are you're using. Uh, I know a, a lot of people just uh, will buy stuff because they see it. Uh, somebody do a video or something with it online and uh, they, don't, they don't have the proper training. Um, epoxies and stuff, those, those, uh, those things can be very dangerous, very, very hazardous to your health if you're not using the right, right uh, you know, gloves and eyewear and mask and everything to go with it. Um, uh, hopefully, hopefully I'll be uh, putting together some online classes here very soon. Um, and then I can reach, because a lot of my customer or my audience is uh, out there where you guys are on the East Coast. So hopefully I can put something together and I can, I can uh, train, train the audience, you know, so safety and the materials and everything like that. Going no, back to your... Interested. Going back to your product, um, we were, when we were talking before we got on, uh, you were kind of going over some things, how you're incorporating some different stuff into your products. Can you tell us about those? Yeah, um, I actually can reach around here. Grab I'm going to minimize myself so they can okay. see this a little better. Right on. So what I got here, this is a, this is a foam prosthetic. It's a... Uh, if everybody can see that, hopefully I don't move you fast beige. or anything. It is not beige. It is. Uh, it's. It. It's. It. It looks pink. It's red. Um, 
I can I can run anything in any color that anybody wants. And I'm I'm doing the colors to eliminate that base coat. So you're eliminate one you're eliminating one of the elements it takes to to put this thing together. Uh, so you're saving money and you're saving time. Um, also, uh, uh, when 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 foam is is ran in its natural form like this, its natural color, uh, when it's painted and then and then stretched maybe around the mouth areas and stuff, it gets stretched out and and you can see this color, this light uh, tan color uh, through the paint because the paint tends to crack. It does, uh, some paints stretch really well and some paints don't. Um, and then you see that later on. But if you run something in a undertone color red like this, um, when, when that stretches, it's just going to look natural. Um, so, and this one actually, something else I'm doing. If uh, you guys uh, know foam, it smells like uh, rotten eggs. Uh, that is the sulfur and the ammonias uh, that it takes to uh, cure these things. Um, uh, I, I am... I'm, I'm doing a, a scent additives to my foam. Um, this one actually smells like cake. And uh, I have a, um, I have a uh, Pennywise back here. It's not Pennywise because it's not licensed, but uh, it's, it's kind of like a Pennywise. It's a, it's a clown. Um, and this one smells like waffle cones. Uh, and I'm playing around with some other stuff, uh, cotton candy. So if you can imagine a line of foam clown prosthetics, and they smell like waffle cones and uh, cotton candy. Um, it, uh, it, it's fun. Um, I'm also doing this right here, if you can see. Um, there's a mesh that's been baked into this. So uh, I don't recommend that uh, foam prosthetics are, are uh, reused just because it is, it is a, it's, a, it's a sponge and it soaks up all the oils and everything from the face, the sweat and all that stuff. And it's just, it's just not very hygienic. Um, but there, through my 20 years, everybody asks, well, what if I want to reuse it? You know, well, it's, it tears apart when you're, you, you, you fill it with the uh, removers and things like that. So I said, oh, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, humor everybody. Uh, this has actually got the mesh put in there, and you can see how I'm, I'm really tugging on this thing, um, and it's very, very, very strong. Uh, it'll be the the flashing, which is uh, these pieces here, will be cut out, and the flashing that's around here will be cut out, um, and it'll blend just like any other foam piece. Uh, it'll breathe and feel just as comfortable as any other foam piece. Um, it's just stronger. Uh, I'm going to charge more for them, but um, this is something that I'm going to bring to uh, Trans World and see see what the audience thinks of it, see what my customers think of it, uh, and see where it goes. Um, it does take a little bit more labor time to put in there, uh, and a little bit more labor with the trimming, because uh, normally you would just pull pull the flashing off by hand. This way, you're having to do it with scissors. Um, but we'll see what happens. I, I'm excited for it. You know. Um, one of the things that one of the things that I've seen a lot of is um, haunts that turn foam uh, appliances into something like a sock mask. Yes. So that, yep. that they can just pull it on. Uh, yep. Is that something that that could be an uh, option? You, well, I'm actually, you, you know, you bring it up, but I, I am actually working on that. Um, let me get this guy back out here again. So. So what, what what I have to do to, to be able to uh, to bake the mesh into the foam is I have to change how uh, the design of of the mold actually uh, this flashing that you see here all the way around this flashing over the eyes um, this little flashing right here this whole nose piece comes out and then it just leaves it's your nose and your mouth um, this stuff is actually sculpted into uh, the mold. And the reason why it's on there is when it, when I put epoxy over the top of my sculpt, um, if if it was just epoxy on epoxy right here, I run the risk of it be, becoming like a, a a lock, and then I can't get the the two parts apart. Um, that that would be a problem. You you put a lot of work into a sculpt and then you can't get it apart. You're screwed. Uh, it's basically just throw the trash and start over again. So that is one reason why I do the flashing 
And then another reason is that uh, when it's, if it doesn't have the mesh in there, um, you, it's used as like a handle. So when, when you're applying the foam, you can stretch it out over the glue and get the nice fine edge around here. Um, so that's the other reason. Uh, to, to do the sock mask, I have to, I have to change how I do this. I'll have to sculpt, every sculpt will have to go all the way back to the edge of my mold, all the way around. Um, it'll have to have, the eyes, those things are okay. It's just the outside edge because when it comes out, out of the, out of the oven, this foam is on here. You, you can't, uh, this doesn't come off, you know, uh, if it was a full sock. If you get what I'm saying, I don't know if you guys understand what I'm saying. Um, I do. So, but I, but I'm, I, I, I am giving it some thought because there are a lot of guys. I know uh, Nick Wolf loves to take my foam pieces every time when I come out with a new one and make a a, a, a sock mask out of it. Um, and I know he travels and teaches how to make sock masks. Um, they're they're very comfortable, you know. And and uh, you you put it over a you know a pantyhose stocking and pull it over your face. You get you get quite a bit of movement out of it, which is surprising. Um, you can even glue it down a little bit and, and still be able to uh, reuse it again over and over again. Yeah, it's it's somewhere the difference between just a plain old latex and a full fledged silicone. It's sort of a middle ground. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I I like to you know there's there's I, I, you know, I don't want to say the wrong thing with other companies. There's, there's a place for everything. You know, there's a place for a silicone mask and a hot. There's a place for your airbrush makeups. There's a place for your latex mask, you know, that doesn't move. Um, there, and there's a place for your foam. Um, and if, uh, if, you, if you design and put everything together right, everything works in harmony. Uh, foam, foam prosthetics work really well uh, when, you, when you have somebody that's in, in your face, you know, uh, somebody, somebody that has to do a lot of talking, a lot of speech. They have a, you know, they have a script they're going off of or um, in my opinion, uh, the way that uh, the audience is changing and the way the trends are going, I think a lot more foam prosthetics should be used in haunts because uh, a lot of the audience is just they're they're evolving and just like the industry does it, it it's evolving quickly and people are getting desensitized to a lot of things and they're pointing things out just like we did uh from 80s films when uh you saw some puppet on on screen and and uh you're like how the hell did they do that uh nowadays it's just like even if it's a puppy a puppet or something people point it out and go oh cgi you know and they're not scared, you know, there's nothing, you know, no emotion is just because that's where they, they go, they go to. Uh, same way with the uh, haunted attractions and things like that. I feel I could be wrong. I don't own a haunted attraction. I don't, I've never ran one. Um, but I do do my research. Um, I feel that uh, um, the resources are there now um, to be able to put a lot more foam into haunts and let that that in your face interaction happen between customer and actors um sell it you know well a lot of characters in haunted houses are just like you see in the movies you have your your hero characters yeah. that is right up front of the screen and then you've got you know secondary characters that are a little farther away yeah. and then you've got that zombie horde in the background and those ones don't need to be the the highest end you know mm -hmm. six hours or 15 hours in makeup uh yeah they'll slap those on in a production line yeah and haunts are the same thing yeah yeah of course of course um which kind of brings me to kind of a, a system that i put together for foam um that i feel that I, I started i started talking about it uh last year um at haunt con and then uh at trans world last year um i feel that uh if if my system is followed you could really uh save a lot of money and time by using foam um so say if it, you know you, you have a you have artists come in and they're working you really want the best artist that, that you can pay for uh to create the best work and uh, you feel a lot of people think you know the airbrush is really fast uh let's do you know let's do airbrush makeups but you put an artist behind an airbrush and they're going to want to do the best work they can 
Uh, they're not care. They don't really care about the time. If, if they, if nobody says anything, all right, you got to move on. They're going to keep putting more and more time into that makeup because they want to look the best they can. You, uh, it's, it's one of those things where you just have to kind of let the ego go. Um, uh, same way with, uh, you know, if it's, you're not spending a lot of money on a bottle of latex and some tissue to create this zombie. But what you're doing is you're spending a lot of time uh, with a, a paying an artist or, or if it's yourself doing it, all that time that it takes to, to, uh, to put the latex and everything on and then paint it and then add blood and everything, and get people out. Um, you're, you're, you're spending money. You're spending money in that time. I, I, I have a system with, with foam that, uh, uh, if, if you say an average day in a haunt is 22 days, uh, you have one character, this is your character right here, and he's going to be out there, uh, for the 22 days, uh, pre-season bring in a really good artist, uh, somebody that you, you know, you can pay really well to do really good work, take 22 pieces of this foam, lay it all out, have that artist paint it every piece, exactly the same, just one color after another. Get it all done pre-season, um, and then you can bring any anybody, uh, a novice, somebody who's just wanting to get into it, somebody you don't have to pay a lot, somebody you might get for free, somebody who just wants to learn. Bring that person in uh, for every night to apply these things, because then you just have anybody just stick this down on the face with a little bit of glue, go around the edges and around the eyes with the paint that is uh, laid out. Um, uh, the same colors that was used by the artist in the, in the uh, pre-season of painting these things. And if you do that, these things can be applied within five minutes. Five minutes, you put it on, you got a character just like this. It's all done, all painted up, ready to roll. Um, that tip there is worth the price of admission to <laughs> the, the whole Haunt Master realm. Because yeah. I've never heard anybody Thanks. say that before. Let's pre-paint all of our appliances uh, and, and then have have somebody that we're not paying fifty dollars an hour to do this. Exactly, uh, exactly. Tonight. And then you know, like like I said, you can bring in some amazing artist for what one two days. Um, even if you if you say if you had ten different characters, what is it going to take you three days preseason, four days? An artist's going to come in. They're going to paint one, and they're going to go off of a paint by numbers, and every one of them's going to look exactly the same. And then you can bring in anybody, and and I think it's a it's a good position for uh, younger uh, in, uh, aspiring artists that want to get into this to, to start them off by just letting them glue these down and, and paint around the edges. Um, and they get a feel for it. And then maybe maybe the next season or a season after that, they'll be the artist that gets, gets to actually do all the painting. Because um, it, it really does. It, it, it only takes five minutes to glue these things down. Uh, it takes longer to take it off than it does to glue it down. Now, one of the things that I've seen in um, in the industry too is a little bit more of a uh, maybe an assembly line instead of uh, your your highly paid artist that's doing the artwork with the airbrush or with paints uh, applying the prosthetic. There's person A applies the prosthetic, and then all of those people go stand in line for the makeup artist. Yeah. Is that something that makes sense? Oh, no, it, it does make sense, uh, you know, and it's, it's being done, uh, it's been done for a while, you know, it's, it's kind of like that's, that's, that's the way, you know, if, if you're running the makeup room, uh, you, you, you should run it how, how you want. Uh, if that works for you, if you have the time, you have the resources, the money to, to do that, uh, you know, so be it. That's, you know, that's, that's, it's up to you. Um, I, I just like to bring to the table a, a new way of doing it, a different way, a more efficient way um, to save money and time. Um, you're, you're saving time, you're saving money, you're saving material. Every time you open a bottle of airbrush liquid, you know, it doesn't matter who it comes from, when that bottle sits on the shelf open while you're doing makeup every night with that thing, it's, it's, it's evaporating, you're losing material. If, uh, if you know the price of a, of a a two ounce or a four ounce bottle of uh, airbrush liquid, you you'll understand. You know you're up in the you know twenty eight dollar range. Um, if it's all pre painted in the beginning, then uh, you don't have you don't have that problem. It's all done in a couple of days. The bottles get closed up, they go back on the shelf. Uh, and then you have a, a small palette that's made with the the base color or whatever the tones are to go around the outside edges, and that those can be put into individual little packages. 
And especially if uh, you're you're using the pre-colored base foam, you're saving even more time. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and now, if you want, I could uh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say you're we're talking about paint and stuff. One of the questions we have is uh, you're coming up with your own line of prosthetic paints. Tell us how you're differentiating yourself in the market and more likely, when is this going to be available? Uh, hope, hopefully, I'll have uh, I'll have the paints at Transworld. We'll we'll see what happens. But I'm just going to turn around here and grab a couple things. Try not to knock anything over. Uh, let's see. Got a couple things back here. Um, I'll just start before right, right before I get into the paint because it kind of goes right into the system. So what I like to start with. Uh, this is uh, a, a cosmetic grade zinc oxide powder. Um, this is what I use to put on the face before anything. Uh, so a clean face, this puts it on there. It's, it's, it's the same thing that goes into your deodorants, except it's cosmetic grade. It stops you from sweating. It stops the oils from, from leaking from your face, and it helps the glue stick to the face and the prosthetic last longer. Um, this is something that I, I am going to be selling. It, it will be in a lot nicer container than this. Um, <laughs> <Yay>! so, <laughs> um, and it'll, it'll be like, uh, so it'll be in a container kind of like this, uh, not, not this one, but, uh, so this is what I'm, I'm doing and this is what makes, makes me a little different than others. Um, I'm staying away from, uh, uh, being a part of the problem and being a part of the solution as far as, uh, single use plastics go. Um, I'm putting all my products in glass bottles, uh, and I'm putting my, this is my glue, my prosthetic adhesive is in here. Um, and it's just a black glass bottle with a little eyedropper with the, with the paint you can see here or with the, uh, with the glue. Um, it is a uh, prosthetic adhesive that's in here. It's not much different than anybody else's prosthetic adhesive. Uh, they're, uh, they're, they're all pretty much the same. Um, you can mess with the formula and, um, uh, make it thicker or thinner or less sticky or more sticky. Uh, I'm going for more sticky, you know, uh, a lot of, a lot of characters are running around sweating a lot. You want to get the best, uh, adhesion possible. Um, and these are going to be sold, uh, just with a little hang tag on them and a sticker on the back. Uh, they will be refillable. Uh, that's, that's the idea is to be able to purchase a larger container. Uh, say like a 16 ounce bottle or a 32 ounce bottle and then refill these and have these on your table um, uh, where you're doing your makeup. Uh, and the larger the larger containers will be in plastic, but they will be in 100% recyclable plastic. Uh, that way we're not, if, if uh, for, for an artist, for a makeup artist, you I'm normally, uh, for myself, I'd be buying these in a one ounce, two ounce bottle in plastic and I'm using them fairly quickly and they just go in the trash. And uh, I started adding things up throughout the year, the piles and piles and piles of stuff I'm creating. I want to be part of the solution and, and not the problem. So that's that's something that I'm kind of standing, making me stand out versus the other companies. Um, here is the paint, uh, which is not much different than uh, a um, uh, your normal PAX paint that you would get from someone else, another company. Um, I'm, I'm trying to do higher pigment and uh, 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 a thinner product. Um, this is the uh, uh, one ounce bottle. And I'm gonna do these in one ounce and two ounce. And it's just a, a crystal skull here. Same concept. Um, it's got the uh, little eyedropper in here. And uh, you, know, you, can, you can pour stuff, you can pour the paint out if you're using a lot or you can uh, just uh, eye drop a few and then put the lid back on. That way it's not drying out so quickly. Um, I'm also creating a, uh, uh, a handmade holders to hold all your paint and hold all your brushes and your CC cups and everything else to go with these. Uh, and then the next thing in the lineup is the sealer uh, that I'm still working on. Uh, sealers tend to be very expensive. <laughs> Um, and, uh, that'll, that'll pretty much be my system. And, uh, what I, what I'm calling it is, uh, uh, stop it, stick it, paint it, seal it. And that's going to be my system. So being the zinc, stop it, stop the sweat, stick it. There's your glue, stick it on, paint it with your paint and then seal it with the sealer. 
Um, and and what, what the goal is, is just to create a very easy uh, system to use and to use all the same products. Um, I, I'll still always use other people's products. There's, I have a whole shelf of stuff that I, that I love to use. Um, and everybody has their personal preference, what works for them. Um, but I, I want to create a system for haunted attractions. That way that um, they're, they're, I can refill uh, a purchase that they made uh, the uh, past season. You know, if, if they're using the same characters, okay, I can, I'll, I'll have this uh, uh, filed away and it'll say, okay, you bought this much, you use this much. You had this character, these are the colors you use. Uh, and we'll just refill an order every year. That's that's the that's the idea, anyways. Um, and then uh, and then if they have any problems with the product, they just talk directly to me, I guess. <laughs> that's pretty cool because uh, any time that you can build a system like that, that's easy to follow, uh, yeah. and and make your results duplicable or duplicatable, whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and and your artists can can do that. Um, you're building in efficiency. And in this case, you're also, you know, helping out the environment by having a, a 16 ounce fill bottle that you're filling your of course. your five different artists uh, yeah. palettes from instead of tossing something out. And so. it just, it makes it so much easier for, like I said, like for the, for the, you know, so you have the artist that comes in, paints them, and then you have the, uh, you know, uh, the, the amateur or the novice or whoever that person is that's getting involved. Um, it could be anybody that just, they can, they can glue it down. But if you have a system in place, uh, they just follow the steps, you know, and, and there you go. Uh, makes it real easy. It's more efficient, which saves money and time. And you know that we have, we, the time is a, is a big concern with a lot of, a lot of haunts, you know, if you don't, oh, if you really? can start, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, uh, if you can, if you can, you know, start people a little later in the makeup room than you had to, you can worry about other things and have to worry about all these characters just running around wild and crazy. You know, I don't know if that's actually how it would end up working, but, uh, oh, yeah. you know, I, I have, I have I'm dreams. Crazy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I really like your system and in your, how you line, <clears throat> you know, painting everything first. And then Jan mentioned that's what she does. Um, we haven't really got into the prosthetics. I just finally got an airbrush last year and we never, we only use it a couple nights because <coughs> there's too much chaos going on. So next year, this coming up here, I'm going to have a different system uh -huh. and um, we're just going to work a little bit better. So I'm planning on incorporating some of your products too. Cool, man. Yeah. I'm going to uh, try to share my screen with everybody. Hey, I've seen those photos before. <laughs> yeah. So, Daryl, do you, uh, you guys yeah, see that? Okay? Seeing, we're only seeing the folder. We're not seeing the big picture, so. Not seeing the big picture? No. Okay. Try it again. Are you sharing the wrong screen? And now all we see is Jeff, just. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even bringing it up. Okay. Well, while, um, while Brian is getting that ready, um, we're going to be looking at some of the stuff that you've done. Uh, I believe most of these pictures are of Lucas. Yeah. Uh, I, I think all of them are uh, makeups uh, that Lucas uh, Turner is wearing. I tried to, I tried to, like I told you guys earlier, I tried to uh, grab a bunch of photos that uh, the um, the community would recognize. Um, something happened in there. Do you and see that? There. All we, we see, see is see the, the folder. folder. Just see the folder, huh? Weird. Now, do they have to display in the window that you're showing on your browser? I think we had an issue with this once before, and I can't remember what we did to resolve it. So, um, 
what kind of things have you uh, put on on Lucas? Um, like what kind of, of prosthetics have you? Uh, oh man, I feel like I put I put Lucas through hell a few times. Yeah. <laughs> but he's he's a champ, man. It's a, I I love uh, love working with the guy. He's a he's a he's a sweetheart. Um, uh, he he'll he'll let me you know abuse him uh, with makeup, which is awesome. Uh, I, I don't feel good about it, but uh, you know when 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 when. He's walking around, uh, you know, a showroom floor. We just did a, a short film for a friend of mine. He flew out here to LA uh, this last summer, uh, and we did a, a film called a, sh a short film called uh, uh, "Mark of the Rougarou," uh, and he played the Rougarou character. Um, and um, I, I glued him. I, I glued his whole body down with uh, crepe hair, <laughs> head to toe. Wow, head to toe, covered in glue. Um, and uh, it was it was only it was only one day of shooting the character, and uh, we we went back to uh, well I have to tell you going back to the hotel he was staying at so I could drop him off. He's in full character as we were going to remove the makeup at the uh, at the hotel, and we pulled into a uh, a pharmacy here to grab a six pack of beer to to drink while we were removing it. And I pulled in the parking lot, and Lucas is sitting in the passenger seat in full full blown Rougarou makeup. He's got the window down. He's smoking a cigarette, and uh, we pulled up. It, it was it was late at night, and it was a construction crew that must have just got off late, and they were sitting in the parking lot, standing around their pickup. And uh, <laughs> these guys turned around and looked at Lucas, and and I, he stayed in the truck. I went in and and grabbed the beer. I came back, and they had moved their truck and their whole conversation to the other end of the parking lot. They want nothing to do with <laughs> with Lucas or anything that was going on. Uh, so we made it made it down to the, back to the hotel. We went up and and uh, removed most of the makeup. And then Lucas he says, "I'm, I'm hungry." Or, uh, I think it was he was he was hungry. He wanted a snack. So before the snack bar closed downstairs, and we went downstairs. And the guy behind the desk about I, he he probably he probably peed himself. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a fun night, man. Um, but that guy, he's a, he's a trooper. I, he had pros aid from head to toe, and uh, it was a it was a pretty long process. Um, I gave him breasts, so the character he was playing was a female character. So uh, I sculpted breasts. He wore he wore a foam breasts, and um, uh, and then giant horns, and the facial prosthetic, and uh, body paint, and hair from head to toe. And he walked around in a little speedo all day, and about a hundred and I think it was about hundred and five degrees that day, and we were out in the sticks. Um, it was it was a good time. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I do enjoy putting makeup on Lucas. And uh, most of these photos here, if you got that thing working, um, you see uh, it Lucas yet? in there. So I can yeah. I can yeah, see can. it. It's can it's blown out? up now. Yeah, can you blow it up a little bit though, more? Zoom in just a touch. There, there we go. go. That's, that? uh, that's John Stein and I. Um, that was a uh, trans world. That was trans world last, last year. Yeah, that was last year. I can see the male product back there in the back. Trans world last year. There's a bunch of, bunch of my sculpts there, foam down there uh, and behind us right there. Um, happy faces. You know, I think that was the first day. <laughs> <laughs> that, was yeah. that was before everything kicked in, you know, the back pains, the the, the feet hurting, and uh, um, the hangovers and everything else. <laughs> it must have been the first day, right? Um, and I so think, what, what uh, was your uh, what's one of your favorite pieces? I know it's like picking your babies. What what kind of? Ah, it's, shoot, it's real hard, man. Um, uh, well, there is uh, so the top. Uh, uh, the one right below John's badge there, that is the first Rougarou right there. That is the one that sparked the Rougarou um, uh, character for, uh, uh, so I have the pictures of uh, that uh, uh, Nikki Fierce took that are on here. And that was the character we did the first HauntCon uh, Battle of the Brushes. Um, and uh, it was, I, 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 used it and created it as the Rougarou because we're in New Orleans and uh, it was, uh, the theme was um, uh, uh, folklore. 
So I wanted to do something that was uh, close to the audience that w was there in New Orleans. Um, so I did the Rougarou and I even had people come up and say, I've seen that thing. <laughs> I, I, that thing was in my backyard, you know, and there were some people that were creeped out by it. I, mm -hmm. I really liked that one. Um, it, it was fun. So, but for the film, when we did the film, I re-sculpted it uh, because this one here is owned by Wuji. Uh, and uh, uh, I wanted to use something that was uh, not owned by anyone for the film. So I, I re-sculpted it. I did some changes changes the mouth and some of the form uh, for the for the, uh, the the second Rougarou character. That's probably one of my favorites. Um, but there's so many, uh, you know, they're not even all there. Some some of the foam that I really like aren't even my pieces uh, that that I've that I've really had fun creating stuff with. Um, they they might have been sculpted by someone else. Cool. And if you guys are there viewing the pictures, um, if you're on desktop or a computer, you can go to your screen and enlarge it too, off to the right. You can bring, I think you can bring up your full screen if you wanna see it bigger. Yeah, in the upper right-hand corner, there should be two little icons. Uh, one will enlarge it to your full screen. The other one will actually hide the chat that's over on the left and make it even larger. If you are uh, using Chrome on your desktop as well, if you hit the F11 key, that will get rid of the title bar and the uh, uh, some of the stuff at the top of the screen. So you can uh, see some of these a little, little closer, a little better. So you wanna, can you go to the next slide there? Oh, you can't have slideshow and have it big too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's the, the arrow. The arrows go away. Okay. So there's the uh, that's the first Ruguru character we did on Lucas, and that was at HauntCon um, uh, 2018. Uh, photo by Nikki Fears there at the show. Um, it was fun to do. It really was. Uh, I remember that uh, they gave us um, the first year, I think, three hours, and um, and uh, Lucas and I spent most of the time outside smoking a cigarette just to just to slow down a bit. Uh, I've I've gotten pretty quick through the years. Um, uh, we we had to take quite a few breaks just to. I I, I feel like I'm just tooting my own horn, but it's true. Um, uh, people I know were looking around. Where'd you, where'd you guys go? We were out having a smoke, you know, we just, we needed to take a break or Lucas had to go to the bathroom and we come back and we finished the makeup. And then the, the, this last year they moved it to, um, oh no, they gave us four hours the first year. In 2018, they gave us four hours. They gave us three hours last year. Um, because it was just, it was just too much time. And I, you know, it, I, I'm working in the booth too. So I'm selling product and, and, uh, bringing customers through the product line for Wuchi as well. So there's, there's other things I got to do other than, than stand up on stage and show myself off all day, you know. Um, but that was fun. That was that was a really fun character to do. I, I really liked uh, the, the smiles that I put on people's faces, uh, and including the scares as well. Um, I, you know, what what really uh, drives me to do makeup is is the smiles. Um, I love Halloween. It makes people smile. I love to create these characters that 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 make people happy. They, you know, you scare somebody. Um, the psychology of a scare, you know, being, you know, everybody going through their everyday life scared of everything, um, bills and driving and everything else, and then you know, like you go through a haunt or something, and someone you know scares the piss out of you, and uh, you let it all out, and then you go right into laughter, um, and it just you know it, whatever it does to the brain. Uh, it, it'll help you through your next few days of life, that's for sure. So I really enjoy doing that. Now, for this costume, those horns, are they uh, just soft uh, rubber? They, they, they are They are slip latex on the outside, and on the inside, it's actually a uh, two-part cold foam. Uh, very, very light. Uh, light as a feather, actually. Um, sure. uh, it's a, a smooth-on product on the inside. And uh, so basically, I, I took a two-part mold and laid uh, liquid latex down, both layers on both sides of the mold, uh, closed it up, and then injected it with a uh, two-part cold foam uh, from Smooth On. 
Uh, I forget what the poundage was that I used on there, but they're super, super light. They didn't weigh anything, about as much as a feather. Cool. Yeah. Another Lucas there. Yeah, that I remember was, uh, that one. That was Transworld last year, I believe. Yeah, last year. Last year and that's, that's the same prosthetic. That's the same Rougarou prosthetic right there. Um, that's got the ears, yeah. It's got the ears. Those are the gremlin ears that I sculpted for Wuchi. Oh, man. Quite a few years ago, maybe five years ago, maybe so six. How many different appliances are on that head right now? Um, so you've got the ears, the facial prosthetic, and then the four horns on top. Now, That's are those it. horns separate? or are they, they are separate, yeah. And they're, they are slip latex horns. Um, they're, they're slip, hollow, just like a, any old mask or anything. Uh, glued down, and then I used a, a Bondo product to um, blend the edges on there. Um, ah, and so then just some paint work, you know? I got some really good photos of this makeup um, in front of that uh, that that build that's behind him. Oh uh, man, it's some really really good photos. Yeah, that was Luke, a fun one. That was a fun. Luke just makes a good. He makes a good <laughs> model. Man, <laughs> oh man, he's he is the perfect model for this. He is. He's got the facial features, the the bone structure, and everything. And uh, he's skinny. And, you know, he's just so yeah, so skinny that you could do anything on him. Yeah, uh, whether it's a whether it's a face or a full body, like we did with the with the Rougarou. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. that was a fun one. I sure that right. And that was uh, that was Trans World, 2017, I think. I think it was 2017. That was just a another character, different set of horns. Uh, that one's got foam ears. Uh, there's a set of foam ears that I did. These are all Gucci pieces. And then the arm, the hand there, the two claws are actually the horns that are on his head that I had created this whole arm piece to go with it. And then on his, on his shoulder there, um, on both shoulders, there's actually slip latex horns uh, from Wuchi as well that are, that are coming out of his skin. And, then, and we created a whole costume for that, the whole uh, 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 waist down as well, all, all latex. That was fun too. <laughs> Even just little Easter egg says Wuchi on his chest. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, John and I saw um, uh, Cinema Makeup School was doing that, and they were when they would do the trade shows, they would put their their like a little logo uh, on their characters and have them walk around with that. Yeah. We thought, you know, I think that year we were like, oh, let's do that, and then I I thought that was such a bad idea, just because now you, now you just it it. Draws your attention to it. It just, it didn't, it didn't work well at all. So we, we stopped doing that. It was yeah. one and done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then there's that's the uh, Rougarou that uh, we did for the film. Wow. Um, I didn't know, uh, you know, uh, what the, who the audience really was for this, so I didn't want to to put uh, the other photos because, you know, he is, he does have breasts and everything else. I didn't want to offend anyone. Uh, but that was, he was like that. So you can see all the hair, um, all that hair was laid directly on his skin. He was body painted. And then he had the ear prosthetics, the horn prosthetics, um, a cow prosthetic, which is the, the top of his head all the way down to the back of his neck. And then um, the face prosthetic, uh, the rest of his body was body painted uh, with alcohol-based paints, um, and then the hair was glued and laid over the top, and that's from head to toe. Um, I created a um, a waist, um, like a, a set of boxers that were made with the exact same hair. Uh, all the hair was uh, hackled by me. Um, took about two days to create all that hair and blend it all together, uh, straighten it out, uh, steam it steam it and cut it and hackle it. Um, and then how long that, was the application? Um, you know, we spent, we probably spent about six hours putting it all together. Um, I, I took my time since I was on a film, I had the time to do it. Uh, so we just kind of, we, we kicked back and uh, we were in this little cabin out uh, to Panga Canyon out here in, uh, outside of LA. 
and it was really hot, man. It was about 105 degrees, and it had been a really hot week, too. Uh, we were in this cabin. They didn't have any air or anything. Uh, but but uh, luckily for everybody else on set, I come with my own air conditioning. So I I brought uh, one of the little floor air conditionings uh, in and, and uh, ended up having everybody conjugate into the makeup room <laughs> just so they could stay where it was cool. Um, and I got some pretty funny photos of Lucas sitting in the chair with uh, drinking a soda and eating a bagel or something, you know, in that makeup. It, it was it was fun time. It was fun time. Well, that's absolutely beautiful. And he and flew, you know, he flew in this the night before we shot all day, and then he flew out the next morning. <laughs> that's man. how that's how we did that. Uh, he came in the night before. I picked him up at the hotel. We went to set. Uh, did makeup, hung out, and shot this thing into into the evening hours. Went back. Um, I think I think by the time we got done removing the makeup, it was probably about one two o'clock in the morning, and um, and then he had to catch a, pl a plane uh, the next morning. I think he flew out at like eight a.m. Went back to uh, Missouri. Uh, you want to throw? Uh, you you want to let us know where this movie, what it was, where we could possibly find it? Or um, yeah. So. Yeah, so uh, what what will end up happening? The the film is still in post. Um, yeah. I did talk to the director and writer uh, like two two three days ago from now. Um, I, I'm I will I I think what I'm going to do is bring a uh, a, a TV with me to Transworld. Um, it will be done by then. I will definitely have movie posters and uh, some little handouts. Uh, with me there at Transworld. Um, it is a friend of mine that, that, that did the film. Uh, it's only, I think it's coming out to be about 15 minutes, but uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's just a, it's kind of a pilot, you know, to, to try and sell and turn it into a feature anyway. So, uh, but uh, I'll have all that information at Transworld. And as soon as I get it, it'll be on my social media as well. Uh, it'll be on my website. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I don't have any information on on how to see it right now. That's that's for sure. But that's absolutely incredible. We'd love to see Thanks. it because I know I'm going to a couple of uh, horror conventions this year locally, and uh, both of them do some film screenings. So even if it's like shorts, uh, uh -huh. you know, I'd love to be able to find some information on that. And, and, yeah, of uh, course. We can get that. I, I, of as soon as I get it, I'll send it over to you. Excellent. Yeah. Wow. And that was uh, that was Haunt Con. Uh, that was the Battle of the Brushes. That was the first Battle of the Brushes that we did right there. Yeah, that was two years ago. Yeah, that was 2018. Yeah, uh, that was the first year that they did the competition. Um, uh, nobody really knew what to expect. Uh, I didn't uh, myself. Uh, being kind of a slow show until Haunt Con really got uh, you know involved with it. Uh, the 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 uh, Halloween and Party Expo is it's you know it's a it's a wholesale event where you know the the you know, brick and mortars everybody comes in they make their orders and they're out of there uh, you don't see a lot of people on the floor um, most people are sitting down in a booth somewhere getting through their orders just so they get through their day so I know that um, they wanted to bring some more action to the show so uh, this was one of them was the Battle of the Brushes. Uh, and it, it did draw a crowd. It was fun. It was oh, fun it to do that. Drew a crowd, that's for sure. Like, even the <laughs> are like, uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, I could, I was watching some of them just standing there going like, uh, what? <laughs> what's, that, what's that up there? Like, yeah. Well, mo uh, most of it's, it's mostly Halloween industry there, you know, uh, or party industry. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, the show hasn't really had a lot of action in years. Um, so to, to for me to do this on Lucas and bring him to the floor, uh, there were a lot of draw, jaws on the floor. That's that's for sure. Um, uh, it, that was that was really fun because it did bring some uh, energy to the to the show floor there. Um, and then watching Lucas go outside, uh, you know, half naked like that, and shivering. I, I don't remember what the temperature was, but it was cold. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, and then just your your uh, passerby's, you know, that aren't even involved in the show, walk, walk by and see Lucas standing out there like that. I did all those spikes down his back and everything, and and uh, you know he's creepy looking. That was a that was a good one. That was a fun that was a fun makeup right there. And that was a that's the uh, 
Krampus prosthetic uh, for a Wuchi. And that's another set of horns uh, that uh, they don't sell. It's just a custom set of horns that I made um, for that, made the same way. Uh, it's a slip latex on the outside with a two-part cold foam on the inside. Yeah, I like how you brought up um, the two different shows merging. We, me and Daryl went to both years, and we noticed the second year they were everybody was kind of loosening up a little bit. The first year, yeah. you know, even at the party, you know, and they're like, "Man, look at all these crazy haunt people." And yeah. The second year, they started coming out with their own costumes, and they kind of yeah. they were kind of all laid back <laughs> a little bit, you know. So, yeah, it, it did I, loosen them up. This this year, this year should be great. I. I I keep seeing uh, uh, more responses or uh, an interaction online with people that are going to go to HauntCon this year uh, in New Orleans. So let's see what happens. You know, and, the, and then the industry party, the booze and brews, man, that's off the hook, you know. Uh, and that's that's always been off, off the hook. That's always been a great party right there. Oh, yeah. Um, even, even before HauntCon, you know, uh, brought in all the haunters. So we had some, you know, real cool costumes and and stuff going on and, and just that whole crowd, uh, that community, um, I, I, which I love that they're a part of this, this show now um, because it does bring a lot more energy. Uh, but I know everybody looks forward to that booze and brews. I, I sure do. That's, that's a good party. <laughs> yep, definitely. That's another same makeup in process there. I like that photo. Uh, so another photo by Nikki Fears. Uh, she took a lot of good good photos of us that year. Yeah, her work's pretty good. Her photos are. And this is actually uh, the Rougarou, um prosthetic here as well. Uh, I've gotten a lot of use out of that thing. Uh, this was Halloween 2018. Um, just a Halloween customer of mine, a customer of mine uh, came in to get his makeup done to go to a party. Uh, that's what Halloween looks like around here. I <laughs> am. And uh, another set of horns, a much bigger set of horns that were made for him. Um, and a lot of red paint. <laughs> Is that it? Oh, oh, there's another one. That's such a good photo. Such a good photo. Such. Look, I mean, it, it, yeah, the bone structure, the weight. The way he moves his body and his fingers, oh. you can just see, you get a lot of feeling there. Just a lot of feeling. Oh, he's very emotive. Yep. Yep. That's good stuff. That's Lucas. I remember, I remember him, uh, well, I forgot what year it was in Transworld. He was popping out of that dead body, that silicone. That, yeah, that was, ghost that was ride 2017, body. I think, uh, over at uh, High Noon. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. He, was pop, he was popping out of that body. Yeah. Instant celebrity right there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I think when that thing hit YouTube, man, it skyrocketed. I don't know what his views were. I think in like two weeks, he was already at like 5 million views or something like that. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> Shoot, the, the, the girl they had in there last time, uh, half naked, she didn't even get as many views as Lucas did. <laughs> and she was nude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she. Was, I got a video of her too. She was for her. Her lines were pretty good though. She was, she was pretty witty about what she was coming up with. I was standing there watching her. Oh yeah. Yeah, she was like, she was reaching and said, "You don't have the guts." To something, <laughs> yeah. you know. She pull out her guts and she would talk because she was uh, It was she was popping out of a girl, so she yeah. was sitting there talking to her. Oh, we are so connected. We're like sisters or something. <laughs> and, so she was really good. Fine. I can't wait to get to the show. Look so guys, um, we've uh, take your questions. Do you guys have any questions? What time is it? About nine oh six. Jeff, is there anything else you want to show us while we have you on camera here? Any, uh, um, let me look around. What else you got back there? I mean, I got. I could. I could pull up. So I got a couple. If you want, uh, here's a here's a sculpt that I just finished up. Uh, I'm trying to follow this camera here. Um, this is just, uh, j just a generic skull piece, uh, new to the line. Uh, this will be molded next week and then, well, actually not next week because I'll be in uh, New Orleans. It'll be molded in two weeks. Um, generic skull piece there, that's in clay. That's a uh, Chavant uh, medium on top of my, uh, my epoxy 
sculpting busts and you can't see it in there. I got another logo in there. Um, that guy's ready to roll. Um, and then I got a other guy over here. See, he's a little heavier. Ugh. This is a kind of a Gacy inspired clown here. Mm -hmm. um, he's kind of got that, uh, that look and feel to him. Yeah. Um, he's actually done on a larger bust. It's a little different than the other ones. Um, and the reason being is he's two pieces. So if you can see that line right there on the forehead, the forehead and the facial prosthetic actually separate out. Old as one, but uh, if you want to just use the facial prosthetic, there you go. Uh, if you want to lay a bald cap down and then lay this piece over the top of it, uh, and then lay hair over the top of that, then you have a, a real, real nice piece there. Um, and you'll get a lot of you'll get a lot of movement out of this guy. And he's got a big double chin under there. He's gonna be fun, man. I can't I can't wait to uh, put some paint on this guy and put him on somebody. Um, and he'll uh, you know he'll probably smell like cotton candy by the time he's on the shelf. <laughs> right on. Uh, so you're going to be at HauntCon this year, but you're not going to be in the uh, in the uh, artists. Um, so I, I I'll be at I'll be at HauntCon, um, but so you know I'll so let me rephrase that I'll I'll be at the show, um, and I will be working for Wuchi, um, uh, but I will be on the Halloween and attraction side. We're going to have our booth over there at HauntCon with product out displayed and all the information and catalogs and everything there. But if you want to talk to me, you got to come over to the Halloween and attraction side of the show. Uh, I don't have the booth number right here with me, but um, uh, you can find us just uh, the Wuchi booth. Uh, I will be in and out over there on the Hong Kong side, but uh, they're kind of short staffed this year. So uh, I'll be over there uh, uh, taking orders um, on the, on the Halloween side. For them okay anything i could do to help john out with the, the sales good. good uh craig's got a question how do you attach the foam to the pantyhose uh actually um it's it's fairly simple uh i just i take the hose and um it's ran this is the piece let me grab this one here oh, here, here we go uh, so this is my generic buck here that I sculpt on. So what I do, I basically take the pantyhose and I just stretch it over this guy. Stretch it over and tie a little knot on the end down here like this. And then I um, got my oven on. And I got my foam in the, in the KitchenAid. I mix up my foam. This is the uh, Rougarou mold right here. The foam gets uh, painted and then injected into this mold. And then this being with the pantyhose on, they go together just like any old prosthetic. Uh, same way I would do any other, any prosthetic. Um, and uh, what happens is that the pantyhose gets clamped down around the eyes. Anywhere that uh, uh, I would ha normally have a tissue blend in my prosthetic, the pantyhose gets clamped down in those areas. So it makes just a... It has a little bit of more thickness to it, but it's it's pretty thin, um, and that's that's how it's done. It's uh, it's it's real simple. Uh, where the extra time comes in is when I have to trim afterwards. Uh, so if I if I start doing a production of those, there there's uh, there's more labor involved in it um, than normal. Um. Craig is also asking, like, what type of glue would you use? So I'm assuming then that would be for making your own sort of sock mask that you can, uh, from a foam. If foam you were, line. you know, yeah. So uh, if you were going to, if you're going to make your own sock mask, um, sorry, my nose itches. Um, if you're going to make your own sock mask with pantyhose and a latex piece uh, or a foam piece that you bought somewhere else, um, uh, just like, uh, you stretch it over a face. Uh, it would help if you had one of my bucks because the, if it's one of my prosthetics, it would fit, it would fit, uh, uh, married to that, to that buck. Um, that way you get it to, when you glue it down, it, it, it takes the exact same shape. If you understand what I'm saying. Um, 
I would use latex instead of glue, just liquid latex. Because if you clean the backside of a foam piece, uh, usually when they come out of the package, there'll be a little bit of a baby powder or talc on there uh, just to keep them dry and keep them fresh and not sticking to itself. Um, a little bit of 99% alcohol, just a very, very, very small amount uh, to clean the inside. And then liquid latex, uh, paint that on. Uh, you can paint it on both sides, the pantyhose side and the uh, prosthetic side and just uh, uh, put them together like it was a contact adhesive and let that dry. Uh, latex is gonna stick better to latex than any glue is gonna stick. Cool. Now I've got a question for myself. You said you've got like, you know, 70 or 80 different sculpture tools, but you're down to three and four that you yeah. use all the time. What are those three or four? Uh, you give me one second and I can, I can grab them. I'm just going to, I'm going to run. I, I have them right here in the other room. So I, I'm actually in my clean classroom area right here. Uh, and next to me through this door over here is the dirty area, but I, give me two seconds and I'll grab them and I'll show you. Sure. Okay, folks, uh, the attendees, do you have any other questions for uh, Jeff or, uh, you know, anything else that you would like to share or know about? Um, as Brian had mentioned at the beginning of the show, this will probably be showing up in some other formats eventually. But right now, you people are the only ones that can ask questions. So if there's anything you want to know from uh, a master of foam prosthetics, please ask away uh, because other people are not going to get the chance to ask this question. This is exclusively to you attendees today. <sighs> All right, guys. So to answer your question, I have, I have a few of them here with me um, down to what I really like. So as the same with my uh, uh, prosthetic painting and application system, I teach sculpting, mold making, and running foam as a system as well, uh, just to make it really easy for people. So my system with sculpting is uh, hands, rakes, and loops. So you start with your hands. These are the best tools that God gave you right here. Um, you do as much as you possibly can with the form and the shape and the, and the, the blending of the edge and everything with your hands. Um, after, after you get to the point where you can't do anything else with your hands, you go to a rake. So a rake tool is this right here. This is from uh, cutting, edge, uh, cutting Edge Sculpting. Um, and a rake tool is just kind of, it has a saw blade end. And like some little teeth on this, it's really dirty, but um, there's some teeth right here. It has a kind of a flat end on this side. This is the end I use the most. And then there's a rounded side over here. Um, so I use this tool to rake out, get the form with the with my clay. Uh, it also uh, shapes everything. And when I do sculpt, I think of everything as, uh, so when I start, I have one big shape. And then I have a smaller shape and a smaller shape. And then I have a smaller shape on top of that and a smaller shape on top of that. And each one is sculpted and given each, uh, its own detail um, um, uh, through the process. So it's all raked down with this. And then I go to my loop tools. Um, this is a loop tool. It's a Kemper tool. Uh, just a wire loop round on one side, straight on the other. Uh, I use this to even further the form, start adding uh, skin texture or wrinkles, like my larger wrinkles with this. And then I go into the smaller loops. This is another Kemper tool here. And it's a, just a smaller wire loop tool. Um, and I just further uh, uh, the detail with this, the smaller wrinkles into an even smaller loop tool like this. And I go even smaller. Um, and then I use, I'll, I'll use a brush. I use a lot of brush. I use more brushes when I'm sculpting than I do when I do makeup. <laughs> it's true. Um, I'll use this to smooth, smooth things out. I'll use 99 alcohol. Uh, I have a secret, uh, which, uh, uh, only my students know so far. Cinema Secrets brush cleaner. I use to melt the clay down. It melts it really quickly and it dries really fast. Uh, so I can get right back to the work again. Um, and I use that to melt the clay down just to kind of round off the edges. And then I go to a baby powder, which doesn't muddy it up uh, and also rounds out the edges. Um, 
And then when I get into doing the, the skin wrinkle, like the small skin uh, details and pores, this is another cutting edge sculpting tool. It has um, some little wires on the end here. Uh, and I, this is what I'll drag through to create all the little tiny wrinkles in the skin. Um, there's one that digs a little deeper than the other. Um, and then this is a, a cut up dog brush, which is the, kind of the same effect. Uh, but I'll buy a dog brush and I'll cut it up into little pieces and it has these little, like, little metal staples on it basically. Um, and I'll drag this through the clay to give all the little skin texture and detail. And then finally, the pores. Uh, this is from uh, Effect Studion, I guess is what it's called. I can't remember. Uh, I bought this at a show. Um, it, it's just a little wheel that has uh, pore texture. And they have a bunch of different styles with different textures. Uh, I'm used to just doing it by hand, one by one, when I'm putting in a pour. And I saw this and I said, oh, you know, let me let me roll it in a little piece of clay out there and I want to try it out. I rolled it on and I went, oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. This, hours. This just, oh yeah, no, it totally did. Like it yeah. really, it really did. I mean, it, I, I got this thing and I came back and I'm like, okay, I'm just, I'm just, I'm texturing everything, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and, and teaching my students. My students are like, Wow, what is it? like really? It's that easy, you know? Um, there, you know, you can't do everything with this because you can't get into all the little details with it. So you do have to get in with your with your tool and go uh, singled out. Um, but I make a lot of my own tools too. Sometimes when I have like pour tools, uh, instead of having one uh, pour at a time, I make them to where I can get like three pours at a time. Uh, and I just use bent wire um and old makeup brushes as a handle and i'll i'll uh maybe some like a five minute epoxy or something and and glue them together um but that's it right there i mean i have piles and piles and piles of tools all different sh shapes of wire tools uh these kemper tools uh different sizes uh thicknesses um this one i think it says it's a d2 uh, i don't know if you guys want me to read out which these which numbers are on these things but uh uh, that's really kind of like, uh, it's it's personal preference. Once you learn, you figure out what tools works out for you the best. Um, and uh, it's kind of like how when I teach my classes, I teach uh, with not like a, a real hard curriculum, uh, not, not, not anything that's like written down on paper, uh, because everybody learns, learns differently. So I like to find out who my student is at first, uh, learn a little bit about them. Um, and then let them get their hands dirty for a minute. And I can kind of, I can kind of figure out uh, what's going to be the easiest way to teach them, you know, to start off. And it changes through the, through the process. Uh, but everybody learns differently. So I like to, um, you know, if one tool isn't working out well for them because I can see them using it, it's not, they don't understand it, I'll give them another tool and then another tool and another tool. And then you'll see it when it clicks, you know, or, or if, if you're doing it yourself, you'll feel it when it clicks. When it just works, it works. Um, and, then, and then just, you know, practice and time and years of, of, of staying up all night sculpting. <laughs> how, many, uh, how many students do you have in your class? Uh, right now, uh, just because I've been getting ready for the shows, I, I, I have one, I have two students and they're in two separate classes. They're uh, private classes. Um, do you uh, normally been, I, I'm to working normally, to get. I'm sorry. Do you normally teach to like uh you know three or four or five half a dozen at a time? Uh, up to six. I'll take six students at a time. Um, I I really don't want to teach more than that, just because I like to give uh all my as much time as I can to each student to to make sure that they learn. Uh, my goal is to uh, with my students to have an army of uh, West FX trained artists out there uh, that are not. Um, uh, that they, they know what they're doing, you know, I, it's, it's my name on the building, you know, and my yeah. name being spoke every time somebody asks them a question, where do you learn that? Or where the hell did you learn that? You know, I want, I don't, I want it to be, uh, all good responses and, and, uh, okay. cool. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, that's completely understandable. Yeah. Um, now you said you're, you're developing, you've got a four step system that was, uh, what was it? Stop, stick, paint and protect. Was that it? Uh, stop it. Stop stick it, paint it, and uh, seal it. Okay. Um, Jan has the question, um, best 
adhesive remover and are you going to have a remove it? I would, and yes, in the future, I'd like to have a remove it. Um, it's something that I haven't gotten to yet. It's just, uh, it's, it's chemicals. Like I said, uh, I think before we started the show, I, I've been, I've been teaching myself cosmetic chemistry. Um, and there's a lot to learn, especially with uh, FDA rules and regs and trying to do it right. I don't want anybody to get hurt. And I'm kind of a perfectionist. Uh, so right now for removers, I really like Ben Nye's Bond Off. It works very, very well. And if um, and it has a sit, that's the orange one, yeah. 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 It works really well. It tends to eat the uh, latex and the glue up really quickly. Even Pax Paint, it'll, it'll really destroy it. It has a little bit of a hard time with uh, things like um, uh, prosthetic transfers, which is basically a, a prosthetic glue uh, prosthetic, you know. Um, uh, it has a little hard time, but most products do have a hard time getting through that, uh, which uh, I'll use a, a Mavidon. So I'll take Mavidon and I'll, I'll add to the Mavidon 99% alcohol, which that isopulpal really gets in there and eats away at it. Sometimes you kind of have to, to mix your own stuff together and, and uh, test it out and see what happens. But cool. yes, in the future, the future, there will be a remove it. And I there want the whole it. system. I want it all, man. <laughs> no, that's, that's cool. Um, and Craig is wondering, did you say you'll be selling the molds at HauntCon? So is that just the bucks or what are you just the be? Just the bucks. I, I'm not going to sell any of my molds. Um, I will be selling the bucks and, and I'll be there to, to help explain the process of getting through, you know, molding your own. Um, that's that's what Craig was saying. It and will those be at the HauntCon side or the retail side? Where do we go oh, to get one of these? Oh, at, uh, at HauntCon. Sorry, I will not be selling them at HauntCon. They will be um, at Transworld. They will be at Transworld. Oh, okay. Um, HauntCon. I will be. I'll, I'll be only working for Wuchi at HauntCon. Uh, okay. West Effects won't be there. I will be there if you want to ask any questions, you know, about, you know, me or West Effects or Wuchi or anything. Uh, it's totally okay. Um, uh, the the Wuchi team is a family to me. They're like family. I've known them for, you know, half my life. So uh, they're okay with that. But uh, they are paying me to to work their booth. So I have to respect that. Yeah, that's uh, understand. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, I would be bringing products, selling it there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the future, in the future, um, kind of what I'm thinking is that uh, in 2021 HauntCon, uh, I'll have a West Effects booth on the HauntCon side um, and I will be bringing all my product there. Good, good. Okay. Um, currently, that's all of the questions we have. So this is last oh. call for questions. Um, otherwise... Absolutely. I think that um, that answered everybody's questions. And as I had mentioned while you were gone to grab your tools, uh, these are the only people that get a chance to ask these questions <laughs> up front uh, because, you know, you can't ask questions just to a video that we play back some point in the future. So yeah. I hope that this... No. Uh, um, you know, and I, I will say that, you know, if anybody, you know, the future of this video, um, if anybody has any questions to ask me, feel free to hit up my social media, send me an email even. Um, go to my website and uh, I'm on uh, westeffectsinc.com and you can, there, there's a little, uh, a little question button, I believe. I hope it's still there. Uh, I haven't been on there in a while. Uh, I have somebody <laughs> else. I have so, I have, uh, so my uh, program coordinator, Kendra, takes care of all that stuff for me these days. Uh, she's been a real blessing because, uh, you know, being a, a busy artist, uh, it's hard to it's hard to uh, uh, get everything nailed down um, and completed. So she's been a real blessing. But uh, if it's not there, I'll make sure that it's there as soon as I see her tomorrow. Um, but just click that button. It'll go right to my personal email. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Uh, I may not get right back to you right away, but I will answer your questions. Excellent. So where can we find a little bit more about you and West FX? Where, um, where can we get you on social media? So, uh, like I said, my, my website is westeffectsinc.com. And then on social media, uh, Instagram is at westeffectsinc. And then uh, my uh, Facebook is uh, westeffectsinc. 
Uh, I don't, I don't know how, they, how do you say the platform on, on Facebook it's at, is it, it's not, it's not ad, is it? Uh, yeah. Facebook, yeah, can, you can you tell I'm turning 40 in a month? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't really know how to use most of this stuff. I, I try. Um, uh, so it's West effects Inc on, on both. Uh, and then, and then hit me up on my personal account too. It's just, uh, just Jeff West, uh, on Facebook. Uh, as for now, it's still up there. And, uh, if you have any questions or anything, you want to send me a photo to, to explain something to you, feel free to do it. I'd love to, uh, like I told these guys, this is for the audience. Like I told these guys before we got on, uh, one of my 2020 resolutions this year was to be more involved in the community and to share my knowledge. And, uh, this has been a great start, man. I, you know, I appreciate you guys having me on here. I look forward to doing this again. Uh, it's, it's, it's fun. I, I love, I love talking about this stuff. If you, if you can tell, you can't shut me up. <laughs> no, no, we don't. We're like that too. You get, uh, you get Brian and I on some topics and it's like, ah, there's someone, there's some interviews that we've done that we've almost talked more than the guests. So, uh, well, we've to we've talked, you know, socialized with them, not not yeah, yeah. Them, so, but it's a lot of fun. This has been a very informative session. Uh, we've had some tips again that was worth the price of admission. Just doing the pre painting, we're looking forward to seeing your stuff come out. And uh, yeah, uh, for all of you that are going to Haunt Con this week. You know, look Jeff up uh, at the Wuchi booth. Remember, there's yep. going to be two. There's going to be one in the retail side and one at the HauntCon side. And uh, then for those of us that are making it to Transworld, we will uh, be able to see you there as well. Yeah. I think we answered all the questions. Um, Jeff, appreciate your time and your tips. I learned yeah, a lot myself, so I will... We're me. We're not going to make Hong Kong this year, but we are. We will be at Transworld, so cool. we'll be and busting that booth. <laughs> yeah, it's right around the corner. So you better yeah. get your products out. Yeah, yeah. Time's yeah. ticking. Yeah, I got uh, <laughs> got two, three more shows until we get to that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I got uh, so. It's, what is it? Uh, we got Nola, and then uh, then I'm going to. I'm not doing a show, but I'm going to a. Um, uh, design and manufacturing show uh, that's uh, down in Anaheim. Uh, I'm going to go check it out. I'm, I'm looking for more environmentally friendly uh, packaging ideas. Uh, I'm going to look at the 3D printers just to kind of get into that, uh, which oh, I did have another product I could throw out there while I got it right here. So I'm, I'm currently making these. Um, it's a CC cup holder and brush holder. It's all sculpted by hand here. Let's see. Where am I going? There we go. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm making these by hand and these are all made out of epoxy, but what I want to do is, um, jump on board with the 3d printers so I can, uh, I can design them and just, uh, and run them through the machine, you know? Uh, but I, I'll have these at the show too, to sell, not at Hong Kong, but at Transworld. Excellent. Cool. Well, we want to thank our attendees today. Uh, thank you very much for all that you do. And uh, hopefully that you're finding um, uh, benefit in this class today. Like I say, it was worth uh, worth the price of admission with some of the tips. Uh, we got to pick the brain of uh, one of the haunted attraction industry's foremost uh, foam appliance technicians. and. You know, the amount of knowledge that you have, Jeff, is absolutely incredible. So we want to pick your brain when we get a chance to. So yeah, of course. thank you very much for everybody. And thanks, guys. Uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of your January. And we will be back again in February with another event. Uh, won't we, Brian? Yeah, we're shooting for the 13th of every month. So um, got a couple prospects lined up, but I'll let you guys know for sure here in next couple of weeks or so, but we're shooting for the 13th of each month because that kind of helps me remember lucky number 13. So sometimes it falls on a Monday, sometimes it falls on a Saturday, but that's what we're, that's what we're shooting for. So you guys can remember too, but. Cool, man. I appreciate you guys uh, having me on. This is, uh, it's been fun. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Jeff. And okay. uh, we will talk to everyone again soon. As soon as everything goes live, Jeff, I'll shoot you an email, let you know what, when it's published. All right, cool. All right, cool, man. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Yeah.
So are we done or what? Yeah. Done. Thank you very much. <laughs> have, have a good evening. All right. You too. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. See ya. Okay. Bye.